Father, in the name, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we praise you. We bless yes, you, Lord. we worship your holy name. Thank you Amen. for your love. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for another time that we're able to come together. Amen. To talk about you, Lord, because we love you. Amen. And we love you, Lord, because you first loved us and you gave Amen. your life for us. Pray you bless everyone for joining us today, this evening, Lord God. I pray your hands will be upon every one of your children and they bless the heart of the hearers. And bless everyone who made the sacrifice to join us, O oh God. Bless and keep, cover us on their blood. Lead us, Lord. Take full control, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Bless us, Lord. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you glory. Bless all our family and loved ones and everyone dear to us. Bless us and keep us and cover us under your blood. And we ask you these blessings and more in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Greetings, my sister. God bless you. And bless all, you. Bless you. And all my brethren. Bless you. God bless you, brother David. I hear your voice. God bless you. Amen. And sister Cloud, God bless you. Greetings, sister Rose. Bless you, sister. Alright, sister T, brother T. Yes, ma'am. God bless you. I'm, I'm going to our sister Clark. Sister Clark, could you read this? Sister Clark, could you read the scripture for us, please? Yes, I will. It's taken from St. John chapter 20. If you have that down, St. John chapter 20. St. John chapter 20. Yeah, and, and from verse and, eighteen, from verse eighteen to verse thirty-one. Okay. Saint John chapter twenty, and verse eighteen to verse twenty-one, thirty-one. Eighteen to thirty-one. God bless you. That's from verse eighteen. Yeah? And if I could ask Brother David to um, give us a testimony. Somewhere down there, and a song later. Uh, either testimony or a song, or both. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, brother. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Are you ready for me to read? No, 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 not yet. Okay. is coming again he's coming for his saints we gotta meet him in white you gotta meet him pure you gotta meet God holy for he's a king of kings you gotta meet him holy for he's coming again Jesus is coming again Coming for his sins. Gotta meet him in white. You gotta meet him pure. You gotta meet God holy. For he's a king of kings. Meet him holy. Oh, he's coming again. Jesus is coming again. Coming for his, for his sin. You gotta meet him in white. You gotta meet him pure. You gotta meet him holy. For he's a king of kings. You gotta meet him holy. For he's coming again. Praise the Lord. Jesus is coming. God bless you, my brethren. Jesus is coming again. He's coming. He's coming for his own. You know, people don't believe it. Many don't believe it. You know, many don't believe it. But we know. We know by his word. We know by his word. Praise the Lord that he's coming again. 
He said to his disciples, he said, I'm going to prepare a place that where I am, ye may be also. Yes. And he says, in my father's house, there are many mansions. Yes, Lord. If it was not so, I would have told you. So, Amen. you know, we have to live a life standing on the promises of God. God is yes. really good to us. You know what? We are alive and we are well. None of us at this moment is in the hospital. None of us is suffering from any dire, life-threatening disease. So we have a lot to give thank thanks for. And we, are in, you, and we are in our right mind. So we, we, you, we're giving God thanks and we're giving God praise. You know, God acknowledges us. God acknowledges us when we give Him thanks. Amen. You know, we're not like the nine lepers when he, he, he um, healed ten of them and just one came back to give Return. him thanks. Only one returned. But we are the one. one. We are the one. Hallelujah. To giving God thanks Amen. and giving him praise. We love the Lord. This is why we are here. Because, you Amen. know, the Bible says when, you, when they meet often and talk about the Lord, a book of remembrance is written up. So we are not meeting like this fashion in vain. It doesn't matter, he said, if there are two or three are gathered together. You know, God knows that sometimes when we look at the church, you know, I was just looking at a, a, a church, very big church in, um, I think it may be in Jamaica, and um, there was only a few people in there. A few yeah. people, a big church. This church may hold like maybe 500 people. But at this time, there's only a few handful of people. You know, so it's come the time when the, the Bible says, this, this, uh, the, the proverb says there's a time for everything. Time to come together, time to, to be separated. But praise the name of the Lord. But we are the church. We are the church of the living God. The building is not the church. Amen. The building, God, when Jesus comes, he's not coming for the building. He's coming God for individual God. people because we are the church. We are the temple of God. Amen. Amen. And that's why God says his spirit will be in us. We leave the building. The spirit of God is not in the building. The spirit of God is in us. So Amen. praise the name of the Lord. So it doesn't matter where we are, we can still give glory to God. We can still give praise to God. Amen. We had a lovely service in church today, and I thank God for the word, you know, our pastor speaking to us about the Good Samaritan. And, you know, yeah. I think each and every one of us need to have that mind set of the Good Samaritan. The Good Samaritan, uh, I mean, the, the priest came by and saw that man who was beaten and walked on the other side. And the Levi came by, walked on the other side. So, brethren, we are not like those that walk on the other side. But we are children of love and peace and compassion. Because our God is a God of peace and love and compassion. So, praise the name of the Lord Jesus. We're just going to worship the Lord today. In the beauty of holiness, we're going to lift up his holy name. And um, my, my, my thought to us today is about belief. You know, how God look on us. You know, and how, how God expect, what God expect of us. Expect of his people, expect of his children. God expect us to have faith in him. And not only faith in Him, but in faith in His Word. Yes. Whatever He says, we are to believe. If He says to us, I will be with you until the end of the world, we must believe that He means it. If He says to us, fear not, for I am with you, we must believe. If He says, call upon me, and I will answer you, we must believe. So everything that, G that Jesus says to us in his word, we must believe. Praise the Lord. So we're going to um, look at the, the faith that God expects of us today. Praise the Lord. Um, uh, Sister Clark, um, I'm going to call up on you shortly to read the scripture. 
Um, and um, we're going to go on from there. Praise the Lord. The word of the Lord is powerful. The word of the Lord is mighty. And the word of the Lord stands forever. Nothing, nothing comes against the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord endured forever. Heaven and earth passes away. Sooner or later this world that we see and we know will be no more. Heaven and earth will pass away, but it says my word will not pass away. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm just in one more song and then Sister Clark will come and read the scripture for us. Amen. He's coming back again. He's coming back again. He went away not to stay. He's coming back again. Praise the Lord. He's coming back again. He's coming back again. He went away not to stay. He's coming back again. He's coming back again. He's coming back again. Glory, hallelujah. He's coming back again. He's coming back again. He's coming back again. He went away not to stay. He's coming back again. Coming back again. He's coming back again. Glory, hallelujah. He's coming back again. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you, Sister Clark. Praise God. Praise God. Give him all the glory, all the praise. <coughs> Here we're going to read the scripture, St. John chapter 20, commencing from the 18th verse to the 31st verse. Yeah, amen. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that Jesus had seen, that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Then said Jesus to them, Again, peace be unto you, as my Father had sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed upon them, and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. And whosoever sins he remit, they, were, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins he retained, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples, therefore, said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger in the print of the nails and thrust my hands into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, again his disciples were with him, and Thomas said, and Thomas with them, then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and uh, stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. <clears throat> that said he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, 
and be not faithless, but believe him. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet they believe. And many other signs, truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. Thank you. Last and ending verse, but these are written that we might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing he might have life through his name. Here at the reading of God's holy word, his word is blessed in Jesus' precious name. Amen, amen. amen. Glory be to amen. the Father, and to the Son, and unto the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. 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 God bless amen. you, my dear sister, for amen. reading the Word of God. Thank you, Jesus. We praise God, and we thank God for His Word. Um, before we go any further, I'm going to ask Brother David to either sing a song or give a testimony at this present time. God bless you, Brother David. Amen. Greetings, brethren. Greetings, name. greetings, my brother. I'm honored to be amongst you today to praise and to glorify the name of God. Um, I, I've got a song today in fellowship, and I think I'm going to keep the song as well, and I'll give a very short testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh, it is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus. It's Jesus. In my soul, for I have touched the hem of his garment, and his blood has made me whole. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus, it's Jesus in my soul, for I have touched the hem of his garment, yes I have, and has made me home, made me home. Amen. 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 Thanks, praise and honor. Um, just a short testimony. Fourteen years ago, I was not living right, and I grew up in church from a very early age. And from the age of three, I was told I could preach in the house. And my my sermon always was to repent, to repent, to repent. I had an uncle who used to call me um, John, and I never understood at the time why he called me John. Later on in my career, he was calling me John after John the Baptist. And I always had a passion, even in Sunday school, my preference was always the adult service, where I would see many preachers come and preach the word of God, and I found it very, very inspirational. Cut long story short, um, as time went on, I would be mixing with the wrong company and so forth and so forth and drifted away from my faith, hearing about all different types of faith, etc. At the age of 40, um, was when I decided, I thought, no, I can't do that this anymore. I've done all the party, all the, all the stuff that you really do in the world. And I was desperate for God. I said, Lord, what can I do? I'm in a situation right now where I know I can't serve you the way I was living. And God literally came into my life and turned it upside it down. The Bible describes that you have a broken spirit, a contrite heart. Mm -hmm. And I learned that from my own experience that you broke the spirit. At the time when he did it, I remember I was in, um, I was being told by the witness of Isaac Dagan to just drive my car into a room and call it a day because the shift in the name right now is too late for me. And it's like, still, you know, was that said, no, no, I will welcome you. Come back, come back to me. I will see you. And it was during that period of me dedicating myself to discipline, the tough forgiveness, the 
to, he eventually got back home and came back to the father. And I've not looked back since. My goal right now, I understand, is to share whatever gift God has given me, to share his word, whether he is in or the song. And I can truly say that being with him has been to the best of my life. Every single aspect of my life of being a, a, a father and a husband, son, brother, friend, anything has come full circle. And I can say that my redeemer lives. When we, when we dedicate ourselves to him, when we don't have one foot out, one foot in, when we fully commit to him, all of his promises come to pass. We truly have a mighty God. There is none like him. I can't hear enough Amen. to give thanks and praise for my redeemer, for my savior. So I'm trying to share the word of God with as many people as possible. We're living in a time now where we see so much trial and, and, and tribulation amongst us. So many people are lost and they want to find what we already have. So for me, for myself, it's to encourage as many people to come to God. Let them know that He is the answer. He is the light. He is the truth. There is no other way. There's only one way to God that we serve. And so, yes, to keep me in your friends, so I think it's a joy to be amongst you. And I will continue to pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. God bless you, Brother David. Um, see, I know that God has got a true calling on your life. I know that the Lord has been using you in a mighty way of late. Um, you know, bringing your family together, having these Zoom conference meeting with your family and, and the brothers and getting people together. God is using you in a mighty way. May God continue to bless and keep you and use you for His glory. Because the Bible says, I call Amen. you young men because you're strong. Praise the Lord. So Amen. thank God for you. And we pray that you continue to be in the, in the, on duty for the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Give you thanks to you. Sister Rose, you pray a short prayer for me before I start the word, please. Sister, can you pray a short prayer, Sister Rose? Heavenly Father, I give you thanks and praise and honor for I thank you for this evening, for this fellowship that we're doing together with the Redemption Church. Uh, I pray that each and every one that's on here, I pray that when they hear your word tonight, that they'll be touched. They will not be the same. They will keep it in their hearts. Oh, Heavenly Father, I pray that you bless the speaker as well, Lord Jesus, that everything that he says comes from your scriptures, comes from your word. I give you thanks, I give you praise, I give you glory, I give you honor. Through Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> praise the Lord. We give God thanks. Thank you, Sister Rose. Give God thanks to all okay. your brethren who are tuning in tonight to our teleconference. And it's all about Jesus. It's all about giving Amen. glory. Everything we do, Amen. everything we do is to give God glory. Because that's why Amen. He made Amen. us. That's why He created us. To give Him praise and to give Him glory. When we get on the other side, we'll be praising Him all 24 of this. 24 sevens, we were praising Him morning, noon, and night. Although there's no night there. Praise the Lord. But we just love to come together to talk about the Lord because the Lord Amen. is so good. You know, the, the, like with, with God, the, the, the more you go, is the deeper He gets. He's so, he's so deep that we can't fat, He's unfathomable. And we are ever, we are ever going, learning about Him, and we are ever expanding, and He's ever expanding, and He's opening our knowledge. And all we need to, all we need to do is open up to Him. He said, "Open up to Him, and He will fill us, and He will bless us." Praise the Lord yeah. Jesus. So we are happy, and we are happy people. You know, when we are blessed, we blessings mean happiness. And when God bless us, it means that we will be happy in every situation. It doesn't matter what comes upon us. We will be happy because God Amen. has given us this peace and has given us His blessings. And nothing can overturn it. Praise the Lord. So uh, as um, we read about Mary Magdalene came and told us, uh, this is... After the resurrection, I'm reading from St. John chapter 
20 and from 20. verse yeah, St. John chapter 20 St. John chapter 20 and I'm reading from verse 18 going down and this is after Jesus was resurrected from the dead you know and you know the women Mary Magdalene came and told her the Bible says Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord Amen. Amen. And that he has spoken these things unto her. Amen. And um, then the same day and the evening, being the first day of the week, first day of the week is a Sunday, and when, when the doors were shut, where his disciples assembled, they shut the door because of the fear of the Jews, the Bible says. Jesus came in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. I just want us to think back on how the disciples felt, you know, after their master was, was put on a cross and, and perished such a brutal death yeah. with nails in his hands and his feet. I just wanted to picture how the disciples feel when they gather together in a room, yeah, hallelujah, and Jesus just appears. In the midst of them. Oh, I think, you know, we, we have to put ourselves into that situation. How the disciples felt. He said, peace be unto you. And even oh, though it was a joy to see the master appearing. <laughs> after oh, yeah. he suffered and after he bled and after he died. And after yeah. he resurrected from the dead. According to his yeah. words. They see him appearing in front of them. How wonderful. Peace be unto you, he said unto them. And when he had said, he showed them his hands. So he showed them his hands and his side. And his disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord Jesus. You know, when we talk about the Lord, we should be glad. When we Amen. meet and talk about the Lord, it doesn't matter in what fashion, we should be glad. The, 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 Lord, the presence of the Lord itself should bring joy in our hearts. Yeah. Just the presence and just the thought. The, 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 the songwriter says, Jesus is the sweetest name on mortal tongue. Yeah. The sweetest song ever sung. Jesus, blessed Jesus. So when we talk about the Lord, we should have a joy. They said, this is, this is the, the writer says, the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. And then Jesus, and then said Jesus to begin then unto them, then says Jesus to them again, Peace, my peace be unto you. As the Father has sent me, even so have I sent you. And he said, and when he had said this, he breathed unto them and said unto them, Receive the Holy Ghost. Praise the Hallelujah. Lord. So they had not received the Holy Ghost until the day of Pentecost. But Jesus yes. breathed unto them the promise. Yes. Breathed unto them the promise of the Holy Ghost. Because the, he had a work for them to do. He said unto them, Whosoever sin ye remit, they are remitted. They are remitted. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. So brethren, children of God, you see the sort of authority and power that God has bestowed upon his people. This is not just meant for the apostles, but it's also meant for us. Because we are here um, in the stead of the apostles. And we... Well, whosoever sin we will, and the, the, Jesus has said to Peter, those who you bind on earth will be bind in heaven. And all, those who you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. Be, my brethren, we have authority to pray people into the kingdom. We have authority to get people into the kingdom by his grace and by his power, by his word. But then, then came in verse 24 Thomas 
one of the twelve, called Didymus, who was not with them when Jesus came. So Thomas was not among the twelve when Jesus came into the room where they were gathered and said, Peace be unto you. He was absent. So he came afterwards. And the other disciples, verse 25, the other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except, except I shall see him, see his hands, and the prints of nails, and put my finger in the prints of nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. I will not believe. You see, unbelief is not a good thing. And I, I'm going to no. show you why. It's good when we receive the word of God and believe and accept it. It is good. Because that's yeah. what God wants us to do. His word mm -hmm. His word is powerful. The Bible says the word of the Lord is like a two-edged sword. Sharper than a two-edged sword. The word of the Lord must accomplish whatever God says. And if you read in from Genesis to Revelation, everything that God says came to pass. God said to Isaiah, again in Isaiah, Behold, a virgin shall bring forth a child. And the government shall be upon his name, upon him. He shall be called the Prince of Peace, Emmanuel, the Mighty God, the Prince of Peace. And it came to pass. Isaiah said, "The virgin shall bring forth a child." That is six hundred years before Jesus was born. So the word of God is sure. Now I'm looking at Thomas Didymus. I'm thinking about him because when Jesus was with still before his death I think Thomas was among them when Jesus says this temple Jesus said in John chapter 2 verse 18 the, he answered them and said I will destroy this temple this temple destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up Thomas yeah. must have been among them when he said that to the disciples because the, the, the Jews came unto him and said unto him what is the sign that thou, thou us seeing that thou doest these, these things what sign showeth thou us seeing that thou doest these things and Jesus answered and said destroy this temple and in three days will I rise it up he was talking about his body. He wasn't yes, talking about yes. the literal temple. He was talking about his body. And Thomas yes, must yes. have been among them. But yet he did not believe the word of God. And then it says here, um, now eight days after, eight days after, because he was with them 40 days after he was erected. After Jesus rose from the dead, he was among his disciples for 40 days before, he fi before his final ascension into heaven. And eight days after his first appearance to his disciples, Thomas was there. And Thomas, verse 26, it says, And eight days after again, his disciples were within, and Thomas was with them. Then came Jesus. The door being shut, and Jesus came and appeared unto them and stood in their midst. And then again, say, Peace be unto you. I, I just imagine it's wonderful that, you know, every time the Lord appears, the Lord says, Peace be unto you. Every time we talk about the Lord, every time we meet and talk about the Lord, the Lord is saying, Peace be unto you. Peace Amen. be unto you. Amen. Then said, then he said to Thomas, because he was not present when uh, when Thomas says, 
I would not believe unless I put my hands in his finger in in his side and see the put my fingers in the nail prints. He wasn't there, but because he's God, he knew Thomas unbelief. Unbelief. So verse 27 says, Jesus said, He said to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hand. And reach hither thy hand, and trust it in, in my side. Because you know, when he died, normal, when, when they take them off the cross, normally they break their legs. But when they took Jesus down from the cross, he was already dead. So they didn't have to break their legs. They normally break the legs of them because they're not dead. But the Bible says not a bone shall be broken. It was prophesied that not a bone should be broken. So they could not break his leg. But they break the legs of the prisoners. But they could not break his leg because he was already dead. Reach his other finger. And behold my hands, reach into thy hands, and trust into my side, and be not faithless, but believe. So Jesus said to Thomas, and Thomas said, answered him, my Lord and my God, my Lord and my God. So if instantly, Thomas had a revelation that Jesus was the Lord and his Savior. Instantly, he had a revelation because he saw this man, this man was the same man that walked with us and taught us. And the same man that was crucified on the tree among two thieves. It's the same man who they took from the cross and pushed a sword in his side. And out of his side came blood and water. The blood washes, the blood cleanses, and the water purifies. The blood washes, and the, blood, the water purifies. And, and he said, my Lord and my God. Now this is the important. This is the important part that the uh, that um, I'm looking at, and it's verse 29. Jesus said something to Thomas. Jesus said to Thomas, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they who have not seen, and yet believe. I want you to think about that. Imagine you're standing before the Lord. You're standing before the mighty God because in him dwell the fullness of the Godhead is in Jesus. You're standing before the Lord. You are on a, a, a disciple of God. Walked with him all these years. And you're standing in front of God. And God has not blessed you. He loves you, but he has not blessed you. Yeah. He has stretched over you to people who are far off, like us. And said, bless are those who have not seen me, yet believe. Can you imagine? Imagine how Thomas must have felt. Because you're standing before the Lord. And the Lord does not, he loves you, but he has not blessed you. Because of your unbelief. Because it took you so, you had to see everything before you believe. You didn't believe the other disciples, the other ten, because Judas already committed suicide, you did not believe the other ten that says, we have seen the Lord. You doubted. 
You did not believe when Jesus says, This temple will I tear down and, re and build it up in three days. You did not believe. You did not believe when Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. You did not believe, but you walked with the Lord. Amen. I'm thinking, if I was in a state like that, I'm standing before the Lord, and the Lord choose to go over my head and bless those who are far off. And I am before the Lord. Unbelief. Well, I think um, Jesus fell, fed 5,000. In Matthew chapter 14, verse 13, it says, When Jesus heard it, he departed. That is after the death of John the Baptist. Jesus, the, it says, When Jesus heard that a herald had killed, somebody's got something going on there. Please, can you silence your phone, please? Um, Jesus said, He departed hence after they killed John the Baptist, and they told Jesus, when Jesus heard it, he departed hence by a ship into a desert apart. And when the people heard thereof, they followed him. Can you please mute your phone, please? Um, followed him on foot out of the city. So, and Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and moved with compassion towards them. And he healed their sick. And in when the evening, his disciples came to him, saying, This is a desert place, and it's time now, pass, send the multitude away that they may go into the village and buy themselves victuals. So imagine Jesus. He had a multitude of five thousand. And in those days, they, they didn't have anything like a microphone. I don't know. They never had a microphone. But imagine the, the power of the Lord when he spoke. I mean, if people have a gathering today of 50 people, they need a microphone. He had 100 times that, 5,000. He didn't need a microphone to talk to them. And they all heard his word because he was Lord. He was powerful. He was almighty. In him was the fullness. Amen. In him was the fullness of the Godhead dwelling in him. He had power. And then Jesus said unto them, the disciples said, send them away. Let them by virtue. Oh. Jesus said, they need not to depart. Give them to eat. And he's brought to them a boy with five loaves and two fishes they said all we have is, a, is five loaves and two fishes and he said bring them and when Jesus blessed it it multiplied and it fed 5,000 you know I'm just saying that if we were alive in those days of the apostles and we saw what the Lord Jesus was doing how he fell, fed the multitude how he he, he, he healed those that were sick those were with all sorts of the woman with the issue of blood imagine that woman suffered all her life for years spent all her life savings on physician and she said if I could just touch his clothes I shall be made whole Imagine that. Just imagine, brethren, that we were in, just imagine you we were around when Jesus was on earth in the flesh and seen all that he has done. How could we ever doubt with the doubt that Thomas had? Everyone is so different. Everyone is separated. Everyone have different sort of beliefs, uh, a level of belief, level of faith. Yes. But Thomas' faith was very low. 
Jesus reached over and blessed us. And Thomas Ray was right in front of him. Our God is a great God. Our God is a mighty God. Our God is great. Our God is wonderful. Now, you know, thinking about what we're going through today, and um, there's people right now who are saying they don't believe in God. Why? They, they can't see. They don't believe in what they can't see. So I, say, you, I would want to ask a question. When it comes to COVID-19, coronavirus, can you see coronavirus? Can you see COVID-19? No, they can't see. But they may say, oh, but it's killed a lot of people. But you can say, so has cancer, so has AIDS, so has Ebola. So why you believe in something that you can, you believe in something that you can see, you can't see, and you don't believe in something that you can't see. But God lives. He lives. Praise the name of the Lord. He lives. And he lives within my heart. He lives within your heart, brethren. He yeah. is a great God. He has not changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. His blood has never lost its power. Never. Now, now there was a time when they bought a, a child that was dumb and deaf to Jesus. And they bought the child unto Jesus. As his, as his disciples was trying to heal the child, but they could not. And they bought him, the child, to Jesus. And the child fell on the ground and wallowed in vomiting. And Jesus said to his father, How long since this came unto him? And he says, From a child. You see, sometimes things come unto us for a long time, and we never get any remedy for anything that we have. No true remedy until we meet Jesus. It doesn't matter what it is. Jesus is the solution. Jesus is the healer of our every ailment. Praise the Lord. We have seen what God has done. Every one of us has got a testimony of what God has done. We have testimony of what God can do. So the father said, of time he cast himself into fire. Imagine, the child is so sick. The child cast herself into fire and into water to destroy him. But it, it cannot do anything. Have compassion on us. You see, when we ask God to have mercy, it's a great thing. Because our God is a God of compassion. He has compassion. The time when he felt the multitude there is because he had compassion. The disciples said, send them away. But he had compassion. He said, feed them. And he break the bread and he feed them. 5,000 people fed. Praise the Lord. By three, five loaves of bread and two fishes. But here comes this woman. Here comes this child now. Jesus says, if thou believe. Now listen. Jesus says, if thou believe. All things are possible to him that believe. So, if you believe. So the child is got is falling into fire, is falling into water, and all sorts of things, and it's thrown, vomiting, water and foaming. Jesus says, if thou believe, all things are possible. You see the power of faith. And straight away the father cried out. Now listen, I'm reading from Mark chapter 9 and verse 24 now. Mark chapter 9 verse 24 and straight away the father of the child cried out and said with tears I believe I believe help thou my unbelief yep. I believe 
Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. Sometimes our unbelief needs to be helped. And we need to ask God. Not that we are not that I believe anyone is doubting. But if you if anyone's doubt, ask God for faith. For this unbelief, you know, many people are like that. They don't believe. You tell them, you talk to them over and over, they will not believe. But we know the Bible says, He that cometh unto God must believe that he is. The first step to come to God is to believe. Unless one come to God and believe, you can't know God. Because God is not some someone that we can see with the naked eye. God is not visible with the naked eye. So we see God through faith. That's why the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. Yes. So he says, so Jesus says, and they saw the people came running, he rebuked them. The false spirit said, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter him no more. And straight away the child was healed. So how powerful is the word of God? How great and how wonderful. And you know, this is the God we serve. He's there for us. Call upon him at any time, whatever the circumstances. I've seen God work. I think we've all seen God work. We all see how God can do. And it's not that you don't know, but you know we just need to hold on and trust him. Stand on his word. Let doubt go. Let doubt walk vanish from us. We should not be doubtful. Because God has blessed us whilst, while Thomas stood before the Lord. God blessed us because we believe. We believe that he's Lord. We believe his word. We believe he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We believe it. We believe that he said he's coming back again. We believe Amen. that it says in the last days perilous times will come. We have seen perilous times. Everything that is in the word of God, brethren, we have seen. We have witnesses. Each one of us have a testimony. What God has done for us. We have seen, we prayed and God had answered. We call upon the Lord. And the Lord come. He is not God that is not a God that is far away. Now it, it says in Proverbs chapter six, verse sixteen, there's six things that the Lord do hate. Yea, even seven are abomination. And God hates a proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, heart that devise wicked imagination. Feet that swift to run into mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. Amen. We're not among those brethren, but we know the things that God does hate. And we're not among those, praise the Lord. And we stay in the will of the Lord. We have the love of God. We have the peace of God. We have the joy of God. Hallelujah. We have the hope. We have the faith. Praise the Lord. We are blessed. We are blessed. We are wonderfully blessed. Praise the Lord. So we just want to give God praise. We want to give God glory. And, um, and this time we see the power of God when Lazarus died. When Lazarus died and Jesus tarried. And it says that Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever, now, whatever you ask of God, God will give thee. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that great? That Martha had faith in Jesus. 
That's what God wants us to do, to have faith in Him. Martha said, Jesus, if thou hast been here, my brother would not have died. But I know, even now, that whatsoever thou asks of God, God will give you. And it is for us, brethren. This is why we should not underestimate our calling. We should not underestimate our calling. Whatever we ask of God that is in His will, He will give it unto us. And Jesus said to him, to unto her, unto Martha, that brother will rise again. Hallelujah. You see confidence and faith? Oh, praise the Lord. Brethren, let us give God praise. Give God glory. Because He has called us. He has called us to His service. And he's, when, when, you know, even in the natural world, when you are going to the army and you have to go out to fight, they don't send you out just like that in your, no, in your normal clothes. You are padded up. You, are, you, you, you have all the, the gears that you need to fight. So don't believe that God has left us and just send us out like that. We are geared up. He has blessed us. He has given us His Holy Spirit. He is there with us. He hasn't left here. He will not leave us. Nor forsake us. Amen. He said, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And then he said, Believe thou this, God wants us to believe His Word. We live, we believe, and we live. And we, the children of God, will never die. There's a home awaiting us in glory. Hallelujah. Our name, our name is written up in glory. There's a song that says, there's a name that's written up in glory, and I know it's mine. And when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Praise the Lord. This is, the, brethren, God wants us to have a certain confidence in Him. God wants us to have a certain faith in Him. Stand fast in this liberty that Christ has made us free and not anymore entangled with the yoke of bondage. We are free. You know something? No, if, if, if someone has not been incarcerated in prison, they don't realize the value of freedom. I am telling you. You know, if you get incarcerated, even get locked up or something, you realize, oh no, this is not feeling good. This is not right. You know, I'm not feeling very happy. I'm not free. I can't go out. I'm, lo I'm, I'm, I'm like a bird in a cage. So the freedom that God has given us through His, through His, His revelation and through our commitment to Him, receiving Him, it's a great freedom. It's a great freedom. It's a freedom from fear, doubt, and all the, all the other attributes of evil. God has given us freedom. We are blessed. Yes. We are wonderfully blessed. Praise the name of the Lord. And we, as I said, let not be any doubt in us. And that is to take God at His word. Because God says His word, His word will never pass away. Heaven and earth Amen. shall pass away. But the word of God abided forever. You know, this world that we see, as much as everything is going on around us, Peter said that this world shall pass away with a great noise, with fervent heat. This is not our home. He's got a home prepared for us. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they saw a home. They did not find here a abiding place, but they seek a city eternal in the heavens, made without hands. That's the city that we're going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all going to join up. We're all going to yeah, be yeah, together. Yeah. We talk about Abraham, a friend of God. We talk about Jacob, how he fought with the angel. He said, I will not let you go. 
until you bless me. He held on. That's what we need to do, brethren. Hold on. When, when Elijah was about to be taken into heaven, Elisha said, he said to Elijah, stay here. The Lord has told me to go on to another city. Elijah, Elijah said to Elijah, the Lord do so to me and more if I will ever leave you. And he said to Elijah, what will thou have? What will thou that I do to you? Elijah said to Elijah, I need a double portion of your spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A double portion of your spirit. I want to be like you. Hallelujah. I want to be close to God like you. I want to pray and shut the heavens. Praise the Lord. I want to pray and let fire come down from heaven. That is our aspiration to be like those men. They are not here, but God has given us that opportunity that we can stand in his stead, that we can speak the word. If we close to God, God will speak the word through faith and he will use us yes. to do mighty works. Yes. We don't need to fear. Someone is in trouble. They come to you, brother, sister, I need, can you pray for me? And you lift up the, the name of the Lord before you yeah. bring them up. You lift them up before the Lord and it is done. Yeah. And that's how Jesus want us to be not to be like Thomas praise the Lord. name of the Lord if we're going to be like Thomas we'll say Jesus is coming but uh, I have to wait and see him burst the clouds before I believe uh, you know that sort of faith but we know he's coming we know by his word he's coming back again he went away not to stay he's coming back again praise the Lord Jesus yeah. my brethren I just want to encourage us you know, funnily enough, there's, you know, if we think about what happened in the time of Noah and the ark, Jesus said in his word, and you, uh, we, we're talking about the word of God. Jesus said in his word, as it was in the day of Noah, so shall it be when the coming of man. As it were. Now, you know what, we know what happened in the days of Noah. Because Noah was preaching. He's saying, repent. Years and years and years ago, Noah was preaching. He said, repent. It is going to rain. The Lord is going to cause rain to fall. He said, repent. Rain is going to fall. And you know, they mocked him. There's so much we can do, brethren. I always want to tell us that there's so much we can do. We can preach the word. But it's only God can change people's hearts. That's right. Okay. They said, look at this man. This man is making a ship to sail on dry land. Ha! Ha! And I imagine they mocked him. They mocked him and as he preach and he built the ark they believed they did not believe the word they did not accept it they did not believe rain they did not believe that rain was going to fall and so everyone went about their business some was doing their business some was traveling some was uh, planning for five years ahead, someone doing all sorts of plan and projection, and, and, and nobody's thinking about what the word of God, what Noah was saying. Until Noah entered into the ark and God locked the door, and then, only then, they began to knock on his door. Noah! Let us in. Okay. Let us in. Let us in. But it wasn't Noah who locked the door. It wasn't Noah who locked the door of the ark. It was God who locked it. And God said when he locked the door, no one can open it. And when he opened the door, no one can close it. So what I'm saying, brethren, the time we are living is, is a crucial time. 
because everything will continue just as it is going on until Jesus come. He said he will come as a thief in the night. You know, he said if, if a thief, if, if the, of the houseman knows the hour the thief come in, he will stay up. So he wouldn't have a problem because he, he would hear the window open or the door, forcing the door, and then he would, he would uh, immediately protect his property. So yeah. no one knows the days on the hour, but we see by the signs of the times that he's coming soon. We can see. Yeah. It's everywhere. Mm. So brethren, as we as we ch get closer to God, let us look up. Let us exercise our faith. Right. Because God say, he says in his word, prove me now. You, you know that God wants us to prove him? God, he said in Malachi, prove me now, herewith. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you do not have room to receive it. Imagine. God wants us to prove Him. Yes. He wants us to prove what He can do. And there's no one can prove God except the people who trust in Him. Those who believe in Him. Because nothing works without faith. Nothing works without faith. But with faith, He says, nothing is impossible. Amen. Unto him that believe it. If thou believe, right. if you believe in God, you will receive. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, Amen. brethren, I, I just encourage us to continue serving the Lord. Yes. We can't save the world. We cannot save the world. Jesus can't, even, can't save the world because he's given man a free will. He said, come unto me, all he that here have way, labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And we came, we came to him because we were labor and heavy laden, and he has given us a rest. The rest he's given us is an eternal rest which we hold in faith. And everything that God has given us and promises that He's given us, we hold in faith. We don't have to say, I have to see the, uh, the clouds burst open and Jesus coming with the sound of the archangel and the trump of God. We don't have to wait to see the dead in Christ rise. We know it will happen. And it will happen when we least expect. Brethren, let us continue. Those who know the Lord. Anybody here under my sound and my voice who have not known the Lord, I encourage you to, if you have not repented, to repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And the Lord will bless you with His Holy Spirit. And you will have a passport to heaven. Because sin cannot enter there. No. Heaven is a holy place. Sin cannot enter there. And you see, you see the thing is, we can't preach sweet gospel. Because if we know, if we read the word of God, God, Jesus told it just as it is. We don't preach sweet gospel. We say, thus said the Lord. When Nicodemus came to Jesus by night, Jesus wasn't going to preach any sweet gospel to him. Even though he was a ruler of the Jews, tell it as it is, you must be born again. If you do not, if you're, unless you're born again, you cannot even see the kingdom, much less to enter. We are not preaching sweet gospel 
We are preaching, thus say the Lord. And if one wants Amen. to be saved, they will hear the word of God. They will hear the word of God. So I just encourage us to believe and to exercise our faith in the Lord. God is great. God is wonderful. God is God has blessed us with eternal blessing. Praise the name of the Lord. So God bless you, my brethren. My time is up now. Um, Brother Clinton, I think I hear your voice. Hey, Brother Clinton, there. Yes. Can you close us a prayer, Brother yes. Clinton? Close us in prayer, please, Brother Clinton. Yes, I will. God bless you. Father, Lord, Father, as we come to the end of the conference this evening, we thank you. We thank you all for the word you give us today. Lord, the Lord, 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 we are depend on you. Friend. Our life depend on you. Father Lord, we keep on we have to keep on filling us with the Holy Spirit. That will we have to obey. Without Holy Spirit we can't survive. We can't live. Guide us, teach us. Open the gates of heaven. Open the windows of heaven. Bless us spiritually. Our health. Financially. Cover the cover our family under your blood. Cover us under your blood. We for all the government presidents, all nations, to repent, ask for forgiveness. As he said in his word, when he was preaching, God, I don't know. We in the last day, ask them to repent. In the mighty name of Jesus, without you, we can't do nothing. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank amen. you. Thank amen. you. That's amen. it. Thank you. That's Brother Albert. God bless you, Brother Albert. Thank you. Um, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. It yeah. is well. It is well. Thank you. All Thank is well. You. God bless you. And it's glad to see you. I'm happy to see you, young men. I'm glad to see you, young men, joining us. And God bless you both. I know you both have a passion for God, you and Brother David. Can you may God bless you and may God bless your family and may you keep continue um, on the yeah, 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 on the line. Praise the, the, the Lord. The, 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 God always priority. What you're doing is wonderful. Amen. Amen. Keep, us, keep, us, keep, keep us, keep us, keep us in the kingdom. Thank you, sir. God bless Amen. you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. Brother yeah, Clinton. Yes. Yes, sir. Young Marcus was here as well, by the way. Marcus. Oh, God bless oh. Brother Marcus. Yeah. Hey, Brother Marcus, God bless you, man. <laughs> now, now, did, now, did, amen. now, there's a young man who has, amen. And that's our brother David's son. He has a passion for God, and we love this young man. This young man just have a passion for God. He, He's only 16, but he yeah. loves the yeah. Lord. We have a teleconference. Which he, he's on the teleconference every Thursday. We meet together, and he's a, he, well, lead, he uh, loves the Lord. God yeah. bless you, Brother Marcus. God We're glad to God. have you. And, God you know, continue to, continue to bless, praise the Lord. Um, God bless you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Brother Clinton. <laughs> praise the Lord. Brother Clinton. <laughs> Can you say the grace for us, sir? Grace, can you grace us? Say the grace for us. And now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We ask you tonight to guide and protect us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. amen. God bless every one of you. God, God bless, bless you. you. May God we continue. Amen. Yes, Marcus. God bless you. God bless Brother David. Brother. God bless you. And Brother Robert.